We're good to go. We are good to go. Okay, the meeting for the protection policy for October 8th, 2018 in room 207 uh, is now in session. Uh, roll call. Let's do a roll call. Alder Stevens. Here. Alder Vanderleest. Here. Alder Scannell, present. Alder Stoyer. Here. All are present and accounted for. Take a motion to approve the agenda. Motion to approve the agenda. Second. Motion by Alder Vanderlee, second by Alder Stevens. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That carries unanimously. Approval of the minutes. One, one moment. Oh, I'm oh, sorry. Yeah, That's okay. Okay. Yeah, sorry. Okay. No. Uh, approval of the minutes for September 24th, 2018 Protection and Policy Meeting. Mm -hmm. So moved. Motion to approve by Alder Stoyer, seconded by Alder Vanderleest. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. That also passes unanimously. We have minutes. Okay. On to regular business. Item number one, consideration with possible action on a notice of change of agent for Quick Trip Inc. at 515 West Walnut Street. Staff. Yes. Uh, law department has no objection. We concur. Motion to approve. Second. Motion to approve by Alder Stoyer. Seconded by Alder Stevens. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That carries unanimously. Item number two. Consideration is possible action on application for a Class A liquor license by Dousman Fuel Inc. at 606 Dousman Street. Currently has a Class A beverage license. Staff? Uh, law department has no legal objections. Um, however, we would like to point out that Dowsman Fuel is located across from um, Fort Howard School. Accordingly, approval would uh, would need to be contingent on two thirds majority vote of council per municipal code thirty three point zero eight. Um, accordingly, any motion to approve would just needs to be subject to two thirds um, vote from council. Um, since the business already has a beer license, um, we have no legal objection. However, there may be a question of policy. Um, this licensee did apply for a Class A liquor license in the fall of 2016. The committee did approve at that time. However, council failed to approve by two thirds. Um, lastly, I do believe PD has some points that they wanted to share um, on the request. So I'll defer to them. Okay. Uh, last uh, fall. Um, they did uh, fail a alcohol compliance check. Um, we brought in an undercover person and they um, failed to card that person. Uh, we've reviewed calls for service over the last year. Uh, there has been some calls for service there in regards to juveniles uh, with disturbance related calls, but it looks like um, most of it's just a meeting place for juveniles that are agreeing upon meeting at this specific location because it is a downtown area. Um, otherwise, um, the community police officers in that area do not have uh, any problems with them getting a liquor license. Okay, thank you. Uh, I know there's someone here who could speak on this. If Motion open the floor. Okay, and did, uh, did you also fill out one of the forms on the front here? Okay, here. <coughs> is there a pen up there? Or? Yeah, there's, uh, there's a pen. Okay, yeah, if you can fill that out. And it would take a motion to open the floor. No motion by all the to open the floor. Second it by all the Vanderleest. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, the floor will be open in a moment. Just please state your name and address. My name is Ryan Beer Shergill, and my address is 1410 Crystal Lake Circle Apartment 8, Green Bay, Wisconsin. And I am here on behalf of my uncle who couldn't be here. Mm. Um, his thing is um, he would like to get a liquor license and uh, he said he don't want to put anything, um, uh, any liquor products on the other side of the counter so he would like to keep everything behind the counter in the secured uh, area so nobody can get to it that's the one thing he's willing to do okay good to know any questions uh, just questions for the police if they could uh, well just first before we let's move uh, well, far uh, open. let's just ask okay i'll just ask you one was there a fine that was paid that, that there was, <coughs> was there a fine 
uh, levied against you when they failed the uh, compliance test? I believe all the fines were paid. Yes, yes sir. I believe they got paid. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. Thank you. Motion to close the floor. Well, and okay. Unless and I, 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 oh, yeah. No more questions. Okay, now I was going to give a chance one more statement if you'd like any. Anything else? No. Okay. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Yep. Yeah, just yeah. Clerk, please. Yeah. Motion to close the floor. Motion to close the floor by Alder Stoyer. Second by Alder Vanderleest. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, the floor is closed. Any? Oh, I, I have one question. Uh, you know, we, we dealt with this issue when uh, with House School, and there's probably some other schools around the city of Green Bay that have an establishment that's fairly close to them that has the same desires to get a permit or you know an alcohol license. So I, I guess I, I'd like to know maybe from the police or our attorney if there are, that you know of any other situations like this um, throughout the city where we've had to deal with that where you, it was very close to a school. I'm not aware. How school is the one that comes to mind for me? Mm -hmm. I do know on the marathon on East Walnut, there's a new school that's a block away from there, but I don't know if they've petitioned to try and get a Class A liquor license. Um, because that school is there, I don't know if that's why they haven't done that. I think the Shell gas station on Walnut doesn't have, at least they don't sell liquor there. So I don't, I don't think they have a liquor license or a beer license. You mean on, they don't sell any. On Monroe? Yes, on Monroe, I'm sorry. The yeah, one that's like yeah, that's in their cup. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Their conditional use permit didn't allow for them to that sell. Would be my, that would be my one concern. So I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not aware of, of any. Yeah. If there are, if there are not. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. We'd have to open the floor. If I can see some. Sure. Uh, 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 we'll, we'll open the floor. Come motion on. Motion to open the floor. Motion to open the floor by Alder Stoyer, seconded by Alder Stevens. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, floor is open. Yep. Um, I currently uh, operate the marathon station right by the school. Uh, the one the officer uh, talked about. Um, the school was built um, afterwards. The license was there before, so it's grandfathered, and we that's the reason why we never applied for the liquor license. And the Shell station, when they built that, the school was already there, so kind of they knew that um, that, that was the condition. Mm -hmm. They did try a few times, but they didn't get the beverage license. Yep. So let me ask you oh. The building itself is there. It's been there for quite some time. The marathon? Yeah. Yes. I just, or I the Dousman. On Dousman. On Dousman. Yes, built yes. Ga that gas station has been there for a while. Yep. So, okay, that was built. Well, I think the school was there a lot longer, though. Yeah. yeah oh, no, I was, uh, I was um, speaking about the marathon. Right, right. yes. Mm -hmm. uh, the right, house check. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Yep. So, thank, thank you. you. Yep. Thank you. Motion to close. Motion to close. Motion to close the floor by Alder Vanderleest. Second by Alder Stevens, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Yeah, I know um, with uh, the Shell Station, it wasn't just that they were close to Howe, it was also uh, there was an issue with homelessness at the time that was gone haywire. I think that's more under control now, but it's still been. The school was very prominent, though, in that discussion. Yeah. Uh, I have, since the last time I spoke with. Uh, the school district on this issue about because uh, there was it came up again not only for that one but I believe uh, <coughs> someone by Minoka Hill a, a restaurant or a bar applied for something must have been a new place applying no because of transfer I can't remember how it went anyway somewhere and uh, the school has since taken a neutral position on that they are not uh, opposed or advocating to not get licenses there. Well, like I said, I, uh, all in all, there's pro everything's probably in order and all that, mm -hmm. which I can agree with. But like I said, the concern I have is with the school being close by. And, you know, some people might say, well, 10 people would be asked that question. Seven of them might be against it. Three would be for it. Um, I'm just not overly comfortable right now. Okay. Well, uh, when this came up before, it was denied. Well, we accepted it at the committee. It was denied at council, not because of the school, but because of homelessness issues and Alder uh, Zim at the time did not want to see any of the uh, businesses in that band from Velp 
down to West Mason getting a liquor license because of homeless issues. That was the big concern and why the, all those have been denied in the past. Um, I'm not sure that that's, I think we're finally gotten to the spot where that's not so much an issue anymore. So you feel that with what we have now, it's fine? I mean, yeah, in, I think, in essence. In yeah, essence. And, and I think initially it was always in the, in the cards that if we could get this under control, the homeless issue, um, just out of fairness, because this is basically the only van, the only group of convenience stores that are denied this license. I mean, everybody else has got it, unfortunately. Wasn't there a moratorium as, as well? No moratorium? No. no. And this has been the moratorium district. I mean, that, that's, for, that's for other establishments. Other, yep. <coughs> but yeah. So it was, right. it was just sort of a self imposed council said we weren't going to uh, accept anybody in this band. Uh, for the reasons stated. Well, it still has to be a two-thirds vote, correct? You still, yeah. Correct. So, uh, <laughs> All right. I'm going to support it. I think it's time to to level the playing field. I mean, I, if if, we're, if I could put the genie back in the bottle and take these liquor license away from all the convenience stores, I think that would be a nice thing to do. I think that would be a healthy thing to do. But we can't do that. So, <coughs> I think to make a level playing field is the only thing that's fair. It's not the healthiest thing to do, but it's well, fair. I got a question for Certainly. the city attorney. Yep, go ahead. I was going to ask you, ma'am, uh, these licenses are, <coughs> are done on a yearly basis, is that correct? Correct. They have to renew, um, they have to file a renewal application by June 30th of each year. And if you run into a problem with one particular location, where there's a lot of violations, we can right, we right. bring that back that to point, our committee. Right, then, right. Then, then staff would be recommending, <coughs> be recommending to not renew the <coughs> license if there right. there, if there have been possible. issues, correct. And as far as the police department goes, you're comfortable with uh, issuing these licenses as far as the, the Class A the license? Yes. All right, that's all my questions. Thank okay, you. Okay, sure. Any other discussion? Is there a motion? Motion to approve. Motion to approve by Alder Stevens. Is there a second? Second, second by Alder Vanderleest. Uh, do we need to vote <coughs> separately on this, or? Um, <laughs> I'm gonna, yes, I'm gonna vote no. Okay, let's. Uh, Both have been started. Oh, there we go. I think I do feel better knowing that in, in a year we can look at it again. <coughs> so I do feel better about that. So. Uh, so you, you know. It wasn't stated for the record, but that would be a motion to approve subject to two-thirds vote by council, correct? Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that uh, passed three to one. Okay. So that mo motion carries three to one. Uh, we'll go to council next Tuesday. Uh, oh, by the way, everything we do here is just a recommendation to council. Council has the final say next Tuesday. Seven, uh, six o'clock in the room next door. Okay, thank you. On to item number one. Two. One moment. I just want to capture this real quick. Yep. Or three. Three. We did two. Yep. I want to do two and a half. Yes, we are on number three. And number three, okay, discussion with possible action on general ordinance number 28-18, an ordinance to repeal and recreate section 6.15 Green Bay Municipal Code relating to special events. Staff. Hello. Yeah. Um, so I'm Celestine Jeffries, Chief of Staff. Um, I'm joined today by Nate Frumming, our risk manager, and also Dan Ditchite, our parks director, parks, recreation, and forestry. So this event, the special event rewrite um, ordinance rewrite comes to you after many months of hard work and collaboration with many departments, risk, neighborhoods, inspections, um, economic development, parks, DPW, police and fire, clerk's office, and IT. You may ask yourselves, why now? Why rewrite the ordinance now? Well, there are a few things that came up last year. Um, first of all, the departments that deal with special events did not really believe that our current ordinance um, suited the number and variety of events that we have. Um, while events are definitely more fun in the city, they're also more complicated. 
Uh, the parameters for approval of events weren't always clear. Um, and also risk management has been spending an increasing amount of hours on um, special events. Um, the, uh, Nate's predecessor, Colleen Hintz, um, she, I had asked her to estimate how many hours she and uh, the assistant Sarah, about 10 hours a week on special events alone. So the new ordinance does a few things. Um, and it changes our current practice in the following ways. Um, it creates a new and easier process for neighborhood associations and small nonprofits to uh, host uh, an event in a park or to host a block party. It creates a new process for all categories of event holders um, with some changes that will be coming at the beginning of 2019. Uh, an interactive application with a better approval chain, a more detailed instruction booklet, a, a dedicated special event coordinator, which will be um, a person who's already working who will have some duties added on. Um, part of the reason why the essentially staff felt that it was important to have dedicated special event coordinator um, is because our events have grown from, I was getting some numbers from Dan today, um, just in parks from 86 we had special events um, till 200 special <laughs> events. So we are busy, which is fun, and draws people to our community uh, from many walks of life, but those events require work. Um, we also need to have someone dedicated because some new event holders need more guidance. So for instance, a couple years ago, um, we had the Hot Cider Hustle. And uh, the Hot Cider Hustle was a new event for Green Bay. They had done it in other communities. But as a result, that just took more staff time. So uh, we'd also like to increase fees, which is in the um, ordinance, to cover administrative costs. We were very careful to make sure that we were covering our costs and not charging some other kind of number. Um, we're also going to ask event holders to submit with their application more information that will be helpful to us, such as maps, routes, um, that kind of thing. The new ordinance takes into account the wide variety of events we have from small budget filmmaking. Um, so last year, I'm not sure if you were aware, we had a horror movie filmed here in Green Bay, which will be premiering uh, in two days. So there were lots of agreements that we had to work on, Joanne had to work on. So this process will help cover um, activities such as small budget filmmaking all the way up to uh, marathons. Uh, we also lowered the attendance threshold for to engage public safety. So in the past, it was 10 to 50,000 people would engage public safety. And we've lowered that drastically because most of our events really are in the 1,000 to 5,000 range. We do have some events that are much larger than that, but most of our events are in that range when, when you account both participants and spectators. Um, this also better defines and categorizes events activities and the number of attendees and weighs the resources and the risks. So we took our time really looking at all of what we do, all of what our people ask us to do, and really made a, a process that is um, informative for us so that we can help shepherd events and also allows more events to happen with a clearer path. And then uh, this was, we had many very interesting discussions. Um, one of those was about insurance and uh, neighbor associations having events. And so we better defined how neighbor associations can have events in our parks under kind of normal use of a park um, so they won't have to take out insurance. So that is the 30,000 foot description. I know I had spoken to you to give you an opportunity to um, think about some questions you may have about this. This is kind of repeal and replace, so there's a lot going on. Um, so yeah, we're here. Like I said, Nate is here from Risk. Dan is here from Parks, and we'd love to have to answer your questions. One quick question, Celestine. Yep. It's joking. Yep, yep, yep. Go ahead. What is the fiscal impact? Uh, yes. So right now, um, we are currently collecting about six thousand um, dollars in uh, special event fees. That will go up to what I estimate to be about $10,000, and that cost will 
um, that revenue will offset the cost of added duties um, for special event coordinator for an existing part-time employee. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. So, so the so this. Mm -hmm. um, no, yeah, by all means. Thank you. Um, you're talking about a part-time position <coughs> right here? Correct. We currently have a part-time position, and those duties, that person will work a few more hours a week, a handful of hours more a week to cover special events. So that person's on place? Not, they're not in place now? Yes, mm -hmm. they, they are. They are. Okay. Yes. That's what I wanted to and ask. And currently, you. special events is being handled by Nate um, Fromming and Sarah Fiddler, and they have other okay. things in risk right. management to do. Well, I, it would be nice to hear from Nate and also Dan. Mm -hmm. I'd like to just hear their take on, sure. on all of this as well. Yeah. When they get a chance. Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions for me? Okay. Good Let's job, Celestine. Yep. Thank you. Yeah. Yep. Well, I'm glad to work here. Thanks. Yes, yes. thank you. Got an arm wrestle for it. <laughs> <laughs> Dan Ditchite, Parks Director. Yeah, so we've been working very closely with Celestine and all the other departments to uh, draft this ordinance change. Uh, you know, this is something that has been cumbersome to staff, and there really has been a lot of gray areas throughout the years with the number of special events that have come to the city and the variety of them. So this really <coughs> kind of formalizes it, puts it on paper, and really makes it a simpler process for all of the users coming into the city and wanting to host a special event. So as a parks department, we're in favor of this and we work very closely with Celestine and the other departments to draft it, so. Yeah. One, I have one question for Dan. Mm -hmm. um, with, with these events, are, are, do you find over time that they're gonna be repeat events or are some of these just a one, one time? Yeah, there's a combination. I mean, most of them are repeat events. If they're successful, the groups wanna have it the next year and host it again, so. Uh, but there are a handful that are a one-time event. They're here and gone. But, um, okay. Yeah, it's a combination, but mainly repeats. All right. That's all I have. Well, thanks for uh, uh, Thank doing you. the, you know, Thank going you. up to 200 some events. That's <laughs> sure. that's a lot of work. That's good work. That's what we want to have in this city. It's good job. Thanks. Good evening. Good I'm good Nate Froming. I'm the safety manager, risk manager for the city. Um, so as Dan said, um, we've spent a lot of time working on this ordinance and trying to make it easy for the users, for the, uh, the applicants. Um, in risk management, we noticed that we spend a lot of time kind of coaching people through the application process. Not only what to put on the application, but what routes do you need to take? How many participants will you have? What kind of insurance do you need? And all of those things are intended to be addressed through this proposed ordinance. So that's what we're really trying to do is streamline the process to make it easier for the applicant to make it easier for the administration. Sounds good. Doesn't sound risky at all. <laughs> Try to make as little risk as possible. Yeah. Yeah. Is, it, is it quite user friendly then for the applicants? I mean, they, they still will ask you questions, I'm sure. Sure. And, and but not to the degree like they did. Yeah, and questions will still come in, I'm sure, and part of that is to be addressed with the online application system. It should tell them exactly what information they need to submit prior to the application coming in. And then in addition to that, there will be the dedicated special events coordinator who will be there to answer any of those additional questions. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Nate. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Yeah. Brian's going on. Yep. Um, I'm just taking a look at, at some of this and, and maybe the the one request I would make of the committee is to perhaps hold this for two weeks uh, just to provide I mean this is a pretty big rewrite of the way that we handle events in our community and as someone who manages an organization that that obviously does a lot of events I think it would be uh, to the city's best interest as well as our community to have some of our local organizations who actually host events review this um, and provide some insight and feedback and just one thing that just struck me immediately when I look at this, and, and perhaps Celestine, you could comment on this. Mm -hmm. In a large event over 5,000 people, if I'm reading this correctly, mm -hmm. it's requiring 21 to 30 officers. So that matrix essentially says that this is, this is a guideline for applicants. It is not a hard and fast rule, but um, when looking at the number of officers, that's, that was actually in, so the previous ordinance had like up to 50,000 people. Um, 
And so it really is a guideline. It could be less, and it says here, um, the police chief at, or his or her designee may waive the requirement for services depending on the event, location, time of year, etc. Okay, and, and again, to me, this is just, it, it underscores though the importance of having some organizations take a look at this, and if this is something that isn't urgent, I think to, when you guys meet every two weeks, I think to have an opportunity to review some of this, because, you know, I, I just want to make sure that we're not needlessly or, or, or inadvertently maybe doing some things here that are going to put an undue burden on, on some of our community organizations, because again, I understand we can lift that requirement, but that one right there, when I look at it, would sink every big event in this community. I mean, if that's a requirement. I mean, it's just to go from, I think of a farmer's market, to go from three officers to 30 officers, we wouldn't even do the event. You know, so, it, and again, you can, you can lift it, I get that. But I think for us to have that conversation ahead of time, to have the ability to review this in detail um, with event coordinators in our community that do a lot of these events, just to make sure that we've got the city side represented in this dialogue, I think that's great. I think we got to have the other side of the dialogue represented here as well. I would ask you, Brian, with your concern here, have you have there been other organizations that you have talked to about this at all, or has anybody come forward to you? No, and I know Celestine has has actually approached me, and, and she's. I mean, I want to be fair about that. She's come to me and has said, "Hey, we're thinking about this or that. What do you think?" So she's she's kind of sought our feedback um, when crafting this, but this is the first time that I've actually seen. The adjustment and again I just I, you, you look at a meeting today council in a week I don't know that that's enough time for some of our community community organizations to really thoroughly take a look at this and maybe draw some red flags there's always that perspective of people who have to manage it from the city side but I can but a lot of times that there's reasons why event organizers might do things the way they do and I think to have that perspective represented uh, before you make that decision I think would just be helpful I'm all for tightening up the ordinance it's just again. I just think having a set a set of uh, a second set of eyes on this would be very useful. Two weeks will be enough for you. I think so. Okay. Right. I mean, it's. I mean, there's there's I mean, probably a handful of organizations we could quickly identify that are responsible for a very large percentage of the events in our community. Right. And so I think just to get this in front of them to have them review it, say you've got a week to look at it, two weeks to look at it. I think it would be a very helpful thing for the city as well to have that additional perspective, just to tighten up any loose language that might exist here. So, so we did reach out last year to the three bids. Um, I also spoke to Mosaic this year, but um, Alder Johnson and I had spoken about that. And I, you know, I think it'd be fine for me to take two weeks to go um, uh, shop this around to a couple of other organizations and to give them the final draft. I'd be amenable to that. It's not time sensitive, so I think two no, weeks it is, is not fine. time sensitive. I mean, right. I want this. This right. needs to go January first. The entire thing, including the rewrite of the booklet, and we've already got a draft of the online interactive application. So we do have some time. The other thing that I'm not seeing here, mm -hmm. Celestine, if it's available, is the updated fee schedule. Yep, it's attached. Is it a separate file? It's because yep, it's attached at the bottom of the ordinance. I did not see it in. Yeah, there's. It. Yeah, I guess I'm not it's seeing not, the document. It's not. It's not the oh, it's, it's not the packet. Oh, sorry about that. Okay. So if we could also have that included for review. <coughs> sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, That's all I got. Thank you. Thank you. Well, make a, I would yeah, make a motion to send it back to staff. Well, we, we could just hold it. Hold it for more input. Yeah. Hold it for two weeks. What would you like to know in two weeks? Uh, we'd like to have uh, input from other bid boards organizations on the final draft. Okay. And uh, anybody else who you might think might be useful to have put, run it by them and get their input. Okay. And I think that's really all we need is just uh, input from uh, those organizations in our community that put on a lot of events. Will do. Thank you. I'll second that. Me, uh, a motion to hold by Alder Stevens, second by Alder Stoyer. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That passes <coughs> unanimously. Okay, on to our last regular item of business. One, one moment, I just need to. Yep. Sorry. Yeah, no, no, I wasn't going to read it yet. I was just going to prep it. I just need to 
hit current when you read it so that the bookmark is correct. Oh, okay. Um, one minute. Item number four, discussion with possible action on a general ordinance 27-18 amending section 27.902 subsection 2, Green Bay Municipal Code relating to penalties for marijuana possession previously discussed at the separate Humber 24th protection and policy meeting. Uh, staff, anything? Yes, so the committee previously requested staff to bring back additional information regarding um, how many citations were issued in residences versus public places, how many people have lost their driver's license in the last six months, and how many citations were issued and for what amounts. Um, I uh, conferred with our prosecutor who conferred with our municipal court clerk that um, no licenses have been suspended as a penalty for a municipal citation of possession of THC. It's not a penalty that's imposed. Um, and um, Lieutenant Mahoney did put together a, um, a spreadsheet that contains all the other information regarding the number of citations issued, um, how many were public or private, like the location of, of where the citation was issued, and um, the amounts of the citation. So the citation amount, I believe, is 600 some. The actual fine is six hundred fifty dollars plus costs, which comes up to the eight eighty. Right. Per. Right. Per citation. So the additional amount is the court costs that are added on to the citation amount. Do you have one quick question for the city attorney? Certainly. By, well, whenever you're. I was going to ask you, ma'am, what will be the uh, fiscal impact as far as? It looks like we got 336 <coughs> for 2018. So far, we got 336 mm -hmm. citations. There's a lot of the money that comes in from this. Does it go towards the uh, the drug uh, courts and things like that? Yeah, I believe the money goes to municipal court. Yeah, it goes to the municipal court. I honestly don't know if any of us diverted to any of our drug education programs. Um, that would be some for the municipal court to let you know about. So basically, you take 336 times $880, that's the amount of revenue that's generated by these citations. Is that correct? Yes, I believe so. Could you, do you have a computer handy? Could you just tell I'll, us the amount? I'll do it right now. Oh, Mark's doing it. Good. What was it? 336 times what? 800. Times 880. 880. Is that right? $295,000? Yeah, that's what I got. $295,680. Okay. If we reduce the fine then to the $500, like mm -hmm. was being proposed here, how will that impact the, the finances then? Um, I'm not a math person by any means, but that I'm assuming that the bond schedule would then be adjusted to about, if the max penalty at this point is 1000 and bond, the citation is being set at 600 um, if the penalty max is 500, it'll probably be set around three or four, so it would be about half that. Okay. So would have That's just kind of very... Okay. So it would have a fiscal impact on the court system, what you're saying? Um, well, the court costs would still be the same. So the court costs would, would, um, they would still be reimbursed, the cost that it takes them to, to process a citation and, and either put it forth to trial or, or, or whatnot, have a pre-hearing and, and things like that. So the court costs would still remain the same. That would not change. So there wouldn't be a negative impact to the court. It would just be less revenue that we're collecting as a penalty. But now the, the penalties that we've, we've incurred so far, we're, we're not hitting that $1,000 mark. Is that correct? No. Correct. The, the actual fine right now, I, I guess, if you don't include the cost, I was told by the Muni Court was $650. So even though it could be a max of a thousand, the actual fine is six hundred fifty dollars. Six hundred fifty dollars. 
for that information. You're welcome. Uh, I got a question. Yeah. I, I don't know if this can be answered or not, but uh, you know, the talk is if if a lot of these situations will go to court or you know felonies, that type of thing. I don't even know if there's a way to put some kind of a number on that over time. I I'm just throwing it out there. I, I so know it'd be very difficult. These are not these are not felony charges. Okay. So this this is all a municipal. It's not it's right. Not and I'm just saying just if something would happen where if, if this was such where it was a felony mm -hmm. that you know that would it would be much more. Difficult. Right, and that those are different circumstances, different amounts um, versus you know, a possession of, of less than of 25 grams or less. Right. Mm -hmm. I got a couple of items I'd like to read into from uh, one that's from uh, the district attorney. Okay. Um, do you want to do that now or do you want to wait till we after we open the floor? Whichever you prefer. We can do the floor first and I can read my information. Okay. Motion open yep. the floor. Motion Second. open the floor by Alder Steuer. Second. Second by Alder Stevens. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. The floor is now open. Anybody who cares to speak on this? Uh, and make sure you fill out a form if you haven't already. Oh, okay, good. Okay, well, good evening. <coughs> all right, um, you know, again, I'd like to express my thanks to the uh, committee and all the board in general uh, for addressing this. I think it's long overdue and a positive uh, move. Uh, just got a couple points. I do seem to recall the committee had asked how many people have to pay the $1 minimum fine. I'm getting the impression that it's zero, and actually, in practice, it's a fixed fine. We have six hundred dollars, six fifty. Well, eight eighty one. It's all said and done. Uh, so, you know, talking about a range of fines, not really a thing from what I'm getting here. Uh, I do believe that any driver's license suspensions and uh, no longer do handling repeat offenses uh, as felonies is a very good thing. I had a nice chat with Bill Gavin on the phone a few days ago, and he expressed that he would kind of like to bring back alcohol prohibition, but even he thinks these are good <laughs> things to do. Um, I would recommend that you up uh, this from 25 grams to 28 grams. 28 grams is a full ounce. Uh, if anybody here shops at Costco or Sam's Club, you do know that bulk discounts are a thing. Uh, kind of a deal when you are on fixed income, by the way. Uh, getting back to the fines, yeah, I still think the max fines could be lower. Uh, I understand the intentions of everyone here, and you know, I would just say, however, uh, trust and respect we may have for the current guardians of our civilization, that can all change with your successors. <laughs> just want to throw that out there. Uh, the big thing here, you know, uh, kind of the elephant in the room, if you will, is paraphernalia. That was not addressed in the original draft of all this. I know um, Oliver Scanlon and I have had a couple exchanges about this on social media. Um, right now, you can legally smoke THC depleted buds. CBD flowers is how it's marketed on the internet. Uh, basically same standards as hemp. Uh, no more than 0.03% THC. Otherwise they look the same, they smell the same, they burn the same. Everything but the THC is there. The only way you can really tell the difference is to uh, analyze them chemically. And I'm pretty sure our um, Representatives from the police department will tell you that they do have field kits for these things. However, from everything I've read, it seems that these field tests are notorious for producing false positives. Nor have I seen anything to suggest that double blind studies have proven that they do not react to the trace THC in hemp flowers or hemp products. Um, interesting thing, um, you know, if you do consume this, it requires the same utensils that would be used for the illegal THC bearing products. Uh, so, yeah, at that point, you're also conducting similar tests on all the paraphernalia to determine whether it had been used uh, in the consumption of THC bearing product. Uh, interesting thing about the state laws on this, classic tobacco pipes, like my Uncle Earl's favorite long stem briar, are specifically excluded uh, as paraphernalia uh, on the state level and only the manufacturers intent counts. I could take one, one of those things, pack it full of cannabis, puff on it all day, all night, and it would never become paraphernalia, no matter what I used it for. Um, 
somehow glass pipes. Uh, brought back to from Vietnam uh, by our soldiers uh, with a classic Vietnam word, bong. Simply means water pipe. <laughs> now you're aware of that. And I'm sure a number of those, even though they are sold in multiple shops around the city as, quote, novelties and not intended for the um, consumption of THC bearing products, uh, are probably getting and generating tickets for paraphernalia, even though they would seem to be excluded by state law. Because I'm not sure the state law necessarily specifies wood or plastic. Uh, not that those couldn't be incorporated in a water pipe. So certainly something to consider there. Um, with that in mind, I, I think the best suggestion I could make here would be really just drop the paraphernalia altogether. I, I don't see any practical way to enforce this moving forward, particularly with uh, legal CBD products and hemp. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? Oh, oh, questions at all? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> That's Fuller's. Randy Correo, 1473 Grignon. I support um, whatever the, the uh, most decriminalization that you can enforce. I think I made it pretty clear last time with a bit of dramatic flair that I do support zero dollar fines. Um, I support also the no paraphernalia. Um, you know, if you look at the other cities around us, we are really behind the game for being the third largest city in Wisconsin. Um, let's attract and keep professional people here. Um, sorry. <laughs> Anyway, I'll have more arguments in front of the full council because I figure it really doesn't matter what happens here tonight. It matters what happens next Tuesday. Thank you for your time. I can take it. I'm kind of tethered here. No. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, just any questions? Okay, thank you. Anyone else here for this? Please state your name and address. Yes, sir. And you filled out a. Didn't do it. You okay? All right. Uh, Thomas Spencer, 44 Stewart Street. Um, I would like to speak on a couple of matters, um, which of course have been discussed, but to go a little further. Um, I as well favor, um, well, a fine reduction of definitely less than five hundred dollars. I feel a fine of no less than one to no more than ninety-nine dollars would be <coughs> fair as a compromise to the city so that any costs associated with it uh, through the legal system could be covered if that were an option. That being said, I also feel that a um, the option of community service and or even AODA counseling um, in lieu of the fine, uh, especially in the in cases of low income uh, offenders, would be a reasonable alternative to said fine, even at the one to ninety-nine dollar level. Um, in addition, uh, the amount of twenty-five grams, um, as uh, my colleague, as my um, <coughs> excuse me, peers have said already, seems to me seems to be an odd number. It seems fairly arbitrary. Um, Twenty-eight grams being a four ounce, <coughs> as, as Don said, um, is, from what I understand, a fairly common common amount for personal use, especially if we were to debate the medical issue, which understand in Wisconsin is not yet a medically legal state. Nevertheless, for those who are not recreational users, for those who are not otherwise a nuisance to the community for a, a medical user who has no other option and is sitting in their home um, and may not have the ability to move around to continue to acquire said medicine, would be more likely to not purchase in bulk, and if for one reason or another, it <coughs> excuse me, receives that citation in their home for their personal supply of up to one ounce, which is for them and them alone, they would be punished uh, at the same level as a large scale drug dealer, as the kind of people that the police are most likely actually looking for, um, not the end user who is 
sick and possibly impoverished um, and possibly unable to, to move and only peaceably doing so in their own home for their own health. Um, also in addition, on that note, whereas I also, um, I open by saying the fi I feel the fine of uh, no less than a dollar and no more than 99 would be reasonable. I would also like to uh, slightly amend that as reading what certain other municipalities in the state of Wisconsin, um, first and foremost Madison, as it seems, also Monona, um, if anyone caught with, I believe it's 25 grams in Madison, um, a, a relatively equivalent amount as to what this um, new ordinance would propose, in their, in their home, they would be subject to no fine. However, being caught with, well, regardless of the amount up into the maximum, uh, being caught with it in public or smoking in public would then be subject to, and I'm sorry, I don't have the number in front of me, but a, a fine of it would appear to be a couple of hundred dollars. And in my opinion, again, especially if we're looking out for the <coughs> of the community and to free up the courts from, you know, uh, <coughs> wasting their time and resources on people who are otherwise law-abiding and just jamming into courts with things that aren't really an issue. If we're talking about protecting the community, any per private user who is caught with a personal amount in their residence, or I believe with Monona's uh, law, um, is also a lawful guest of the owner or legal occupant of the residence, should not be subject to a fine Whereas if someone would be caught in their vehicle or in public, a fine would be a little more uh, reasonable in that circumstance if there is to be one. Looking at the numbers here that Stabbing and polled, as of 2018, there are, it's a pro we have approximately an equal number of citations for marijuana as all of 2017. And that was up until <laughs> the end of September which would be September 26th, to be, uh, to be precise, and uh, that gives us three more months. Which means in 2018 we'll see more arrests for this, despite this committee and the legal department and law enforcement all having said at previous meetings, uh, previous protection policy meetings, that we all agree we're not trying to fill up the courts. So that being said, with the already equivalent of a 75% way through this year, we are basically tied with last year's arrest and with the majority of those both years being during traffic stops. Actually, it's about the same number, about 100, roughly 160 uh, citations issued through traffic stops, that being somewhere out in public, that being something where there is a concern for motorists and the, the safety of the public. So reason to or possibly more reason to investigate any uh, potential wrongdoing. There's no, re there's very little reason then to really cite someone who's driving around with it, possibly any influence. Who knows? Um, the same way as someone who's again at their home quietly and respectfully using and having no, no damage <laughs> to the to greater society. Um, and with that being said, too, uh, as I'm looking at it, actually residences, and I was looking at the numbers from the owner, the possessor's residence, or other residence, as it says, or uh, I'm also, I was also lumping in the uh, number of citations found at colleges, schools. That would be, in my eyes, I believe that would be mostly the dorms, probably at the uh, end of the, I'm sorry, UWGP, which counts as a residence, um, whether or not the University themselves would have an issue with that. I feel it should be up to them. But as far as the, uh, in the same note as in your homes, the number of arrests for residences uh, out of the 330 some was about 70. That's it's half of all the motor vehicles, and then the rest, which and then the re all the rest of the arrests are somewhere out in public. So given that an in-home citation accounts for. Sorry, uh, I'm gonna guess here about 25 percent. Am I my math wrong here? That's the number. But still, at least about 25 percent of all citations given, uh, both all uh, uh, both all of 2017 and 
2018 to date, <coughs> it, the, the notion of a zero dollar fine of 28 grams in the home seems reasonable as 75% of all the people who will still be cited will be out in public, will be the people that you will likely be finding um, and possibly the people who are more likely to uh, well, it be interacting with the public in general and have reason to possibly be stopped. Um, that being said, <coughs> one moment. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, oh, and also uh, to go back to the 28 grams. Um, oh no, I'm sorry. I did. I, oh, uh, I would also want to speak in favor of lastly the as the new uh, proposal states. Um, second offenses, or you know, any offense past the first offense, um, no longer being a mandatory criminal charge, I'm not going to speak today to change at all. Um, if you do nothing else, take none of our suggestions, learn nothing from any of the research, any of the data, any of the facts that you've seen from around the state, from in our city, any of that, keep that one, if nothing else. I mean, for someone who, say, was in college, got caught, got their citation. They then went on, got their degree. They are now a productive, possibly very successful member of society. Maybe they haven't even been consuming it for years. Maybe they haven't do once, or maybe they have been regular. Maybe they have a mental issue or whatever. That second offense could ruin a career, or even a college student, a second offense. They're going they're in the middle of their education to become something that could be an asset to our community and our state as a whole. And there may be whatever, then there may be opportunities that they will miss if they get a second offense and that has to be criminal for a small, minuscule amount that perhaps they're using to go to sleep or whatever it is, just for, for something that is not really a problem. And even if we're looking at it from the drug enforcement standpoint, that's not really dangerous. That's not really causing much harm. Why should we ruin lives, make felons out of people who are otherwise, and, and, and then therefore you know, remove opportunities from people who are otherwise assets and law-abiding citizens? So, for, so on that note, yes, please. <laughs> I do, I do uh, fully support the removal of the mandatory criminal charge on the second subsequent events. That is all I have prepared at the moment. So thank you for your time. No? Questions? I have one. Mm -hmm. Thanks for all your information. It seems like the more there is, the more there is. But anyway, um, you were talking about, um, you know, 75% in your estimation of these issues. Yeah, I couldn't. Well, right, I know, but I'm just saying you're, you know, that, that conversation's out there. You, know, you have 25% possibly, and I'm going to talk to our police department about that as well. 25% uh, in home, 75% outside. Are you trying to uh, separate these out and make these two different elements, or isn't it one element? I'm sorry, yes. I, perhaps I was not clear on that because I, I, I had mentioned this in, in respect to. Uh, as I saw in the notes that were in, um, that, uh, for this meeting available to the public and city clerk, um, where the city of Madison, up to 28 grams used in the home, was a zero dollar fine. And same in the city of Monona, um, anyone <coughs> using in their home or as a lawful guest of someone else's home, so if I go over to your house and you're using, and we get caught, I also can't get in trouble. Um, and, but in the home, it was it was no fine. It was, it was no, there was no citation. There was no financial penalty, no forfeiture. However, in public, there was. So yes, I mention this because I mean, it's there are different scenarios, and in other municipalities, that has been successful. Where if you're in your home, you don't get fined. If you're in public, you do. And since only 25 percent of us, are, you know, the people, the, you know, the citations are in the home. It's it's a it's the mm -hmm. minority by far. So uh, why, well, not, why not at least leave those people? You know, yeah, I just need to hear that. Okay, yeah. thank you. Appreciate that. That's all I have. I think it might even be less than twenty-five, well, but whatever. Yep, uh, it may be. I'd, yeah, uh, that's, I that's, yeah, that's I would just say. <coughs> okay. I, yep. Anything else?
Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Anybody else here for this? <coughs> Motion to close the floor by Alder Stevens. Second. Second by Alder Stoyer. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The floor is now closed. Did you want to read your, your statements? from the district attorney's offices. Uh, Mr. Lassie, it says, as I understand the measure seeks to reduce the maximum fine and eliminate the driver's license suspension. I don't think either of these issues will really have any impact on our office or at the court system. There are incidents that are currently being processed by the Green Bay Municipal Court. And I wouldn't expect that to change. We advise, we have advised law enforcement agencies to use their discretion and send a higher percentage of these personal use possessions of marijuana cases through the municipal courts, rather than referring to the DA's office for criminal prosecution. However, reducing the maximum penalty and removing the driver's license suspension <coughs> options takes away some of the flexibility under the municipal court has in determining how to deal with any particular case. Also, I, un I am concerned that it sends a message that marijuana is not a big deal or that Green Bay is moving toward decriminalization. I'm personally not in favor of that message, particularly for young people as I have believed there are quite a few available studies that demonstrate the negative effects of marijuana usage, especially for adolescents. The next uh, I have from the sheriff. Uh, the sheriff concurs. It says, I concur with the district attorney's assessment of the situation. So the district attorney and the uh, <coughs> sheriff, they concur with the situation as far as uh, you know how it's being handled at, at, at present that the Green Bay Municipal Court is handling it. And uh, that, that's where they stand. I have, also have one other item I'd like to read. Uh, this was in today's uh, paper. It says here, it's from the USA Today. It says, stop pot worse than alcohol for teens' brains. It says marijuana use may pose a greater risk to the developing brains of teenagers rather than alcohol consumption according to the new study. The, an the analysts published Wednesday in the American Journal of Psychiatry found that cannabis had greater short and long-term consequences than alcohol on four key components to teenagers' memory. The findings surprised researchers, which initially suspended, suspected alcohol would be a, a, a greater e effect. Patrick Conrad, lead author and professor of the psychiatric at the University of Montreal, told USAD, Re researchers look for four con congenitive functions, problem solving, long-term memory, short-term memory, manipulation, and ability to stop habitual behavior when needed. Marijuana had a significant negative effect on all four. While the study could not tie alcohol to the negative effects, Conrad said, however, alcohol effects may be greater as teens drink more later in life, Conrad said. Authors examined nearly 4,000 students in the Montreal region over a four years, four years, starting with the average participant of age 13. Uh, it says here, the students took yearly memory tests and self-reported their alcohol and marijuana use. These reports were kept confidential unless such information indicated imminent risk to the, imminent risk or harm. Author wrote. Okay, that's my information that I that I've gotten here, and uh, so there there are some studies about you know that are going on about marijuana for teens that, that it's it has a negative effect. And, uh, I think that from what we've heard from the Green Bay Police Department, uh, the fines aren't exorbitant. Uh, there was no thousand dollar fines at, at this point. I do want to but clarify that the, the $650 citation amount, that's the amount of the citation, not necessarily how much was actually paid. So the municipal prosecutor um, routinely does reduce that fine in order to be able to process the citation. Um, on average, it usually goes down to around 400 depending on the circumstances. Um, so if you put that in play against a $500 max, the bond schedule is set around four or three, then a typical reduction would go down to about two or three. If it's set at, 
if the bond schedule is set around three or four. I just didn't want that to be confused that 650 was that's what everybody paid because right. that was just the citation amount not necessarily right. the amount that was actually being paid by by the <coughs> recipient it's a range Correct. there is there is mm -hmm. i mean there's a citation amount and then uh our city attorney with the courts will uh work out it a deal case by case what they think is fair and appropriate uh, so the bond amount really doesn't tell you how much is going to be paid. Uh, even the citation amount doesn't tell you how much is going to be paid. Um, that would be a case by case. For staff to get that kind of information would be a horrendous task to be going through every case like that. I mean, we just got to take this general information and, and realize that that's the process and that's what goes on. And um, uh, So we don't know if someone's paying a dollar or if in, when, when it's all said and done, or if they're paying uh, the max, which would probably be around 880 or up to the bond limit, right, probably. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, on that, and, and as far as um, uh, teen use, th this does not encourage teen use. This is not, that teens will always, uh, it'll always be, even when we legalize marijuana, if we get to that point, it will never be legal for teens. So I, I, I mean, I let you read that into the record. Um, I'm not sure it's relative at all because we're not talking about legalization and we're not talking about uh, making this okay for teens. Um, I think that's one reason why uh, at first when I started to do this, I was looking at Madison and Winona and seeing how about reducing the fines as low as possible to make this more uh, uh, effectively as legal as possible and came away with that would be totally inappropriate for us to do that and irresponsible to do that because when legalization comes it needs to come with regulation and we can't do that and so we we have to work within the framework that this is illegal we're not legalizing it That's correct. we are just decriminalizing it to the point of reducing some fines taking away uh, uh, suspension of driver's license unless it is related to a moving violation. There are laws on the books that will cover that. So we don't need it here to cover that. It's just a pylon penalty now uh, that having talked with uh, the police, having talked with our legal staff, having talked with uh, Judge Hansen, uh, <coughs> they're fine with taking that out. They don't really need that for leverage. They've got enough leverage as long as we keep the fine at a reasonably high amount to give them enough leverage to, to work down from that. Um, so I think, uh, uh, and I'm not sure, are there many other ordinances where you can just, that they use uh, a suspension of license as part of the penalty? That I'm aware I, of. I yeah. think that if you, um, if you fail to pay your fine, your license can be suspended. But that's a whole different. Right. This is this is where it's part of the penalty. Part of the penalty. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So no other ordinance does that, and I just don't think that that's appropriate at all. Uh, it's just a pylon uh, that Besides seems totally <coughs> out of proportion <coughs> to the to the offense. The so uh, correction for underage drinking, your license can be suspended, and I believe OWI, your license. But again, that's that's part of the penalty, right? Right. But those are moving. Violations, correct? I'm not 100 percent sure. I believe underage drinking, even a non-moving violation. Violation? Yeah. The judge could suspend your driver's license. Okay. Well, see, that's another. Mm -hmm. Would that be in our city? Um, I'm not sure if that's governed by state statute or by ordinance. Yeah, that might be something to look at then, because again, I I don't think uh, if it's not involved with a moving violation, I just don't think it's appropriate. <coughs> um, so there might be other laws we need to clean up, perhaps on that. Uh, we'll have to take a look. But from one thing at a time. Uh, and then I agree, what, what really got me going on this uh, was what was mentioned, uh, that, that after a second offense, it goes to a criminal court. Uh, I really would like to keep things in municipal court, things from felony to, to, to misdemeanor. I think that's a positive good for the community, for our courts. Um, so that for me is the biggest uh, crux of the item that I want to make sure that we uh, address and I would like to see changed. The rest is just cleaning up and uh, our ordinance to make it more 
appropriate, make it more fair. Um, it does not legalize marijuana. It does not encourage the use of marijuana. As far as, I, I think I do want to make a few amendments here. Uh, we'll take them one at a time, but I'll wait until all the discussion is done before I start offering amendments. Um, and yes, all the story. Thank you, Chair. Well, there was a lot brought out tonight. Um, I, th I think the one point that was brought up was the 25 grams, kind of an arbitrary number. I have no issue with it going to 28. You know, just that would be maybe one that, of the amendments. That was an amendment I was going to make. All right. Well, that'd be, that'd be one that I I do need suggest. to talk about, though. But right. Okay. Right, right. That's just something I would suggest. Yep. Um, I was looking at the number of citations over time, and it looks to me like about 45% are highway, road, or alley. So it's almost half, it seems, according to these citations, as far as the, uh, the amount that is out there. I got for the for the last year is 166 out of 363. That's about 45 percent. Correct. Correct. The highway, road, alley, those are ones based purely off traffic stops. If you see a convenience store, that might be where the person was stopped for retail theft, and they were in the convenience store, so they <coughs> went at home. Um, but the oh. occurrence happened at the convenience store. When I compile these numbers. I got approximately a two-thirds out in what I would consider public to a one-third at home and in private. Um, ju just based on officers, it's their discretion on which one of these categories they put the offense under. Okay. Well, I think uh, uh, before it was 1,000. Some of the folks here are saying zero. You know, I think uh, like anything else, you know, when ordinances are passed, I always feel that there's a period of time that it can be looked at, maybe in a year, you could say this isn't working or it is working. I'm, I'm comfortable with the 500. Um, you know, you've got to do something. You've got to have some kind of uh, a fine, I believe. Um, and I'll let the other discussion go on, but those are, that's just my first thought. Thank you. Any other discussion? Uh, my thoughts are that I kind of, I'm not in real favor of changing the ordinance. Uh, I think that from what we've heard from the city staff as far as the police department, uh, the fines aren't that big. And, and I, I think that the system's not broken. In other words, marijuana is still a criminal activity in the state of Wisconsin. The federal government hasn't endorsed it. And basically, what what's going to take place here, we're just taking the fine from thousand dollars down to 500 and it doesn't sound like we're, we're charging the thousand dollars and I think it's up to the you know to the officers their discretion and I think you know I think that thousand dollar fine I think is, is a deterrent for a lot of people that you know most people don't even realize how much the fines are that are doing you know activity that's not that's illegal they find out after they've been caught basically and I, I think that, you know, the petition at, at city level, you know, the state really has the, has the gloves on and, and, the, and the federal government, those are the two. I think they have to be working hand in hand as far as legalization, as far as medical. You know, we're, we're on the county board, we're, we're putting on a referendum about the medical one, uh, about medical marijuana. And, you know, they're just going to get the flavor of the community if they feel that medical marijuana is you know, after the November election, we'll find out what the community feels about the medical part of it. And uh, as far as the legalization, that failed at the county level, you know, to, in other words, to legalize it. And we don't have the jurisdiction to do it to begin with on the county level or the city level. And it's, uh, from what I'm hearing from the people that are in law enforcement that, uh, you know, I, th I think they got a good handle on what's going on. I don't think they're trying to be over aggressive as far as what they're doing as far as, I, I think they're being, working with the public and I think they're doing their job. So I'm, I'm really not in favor of changing the, the amount. And that it basically goes from 1,000 to 500. That's really what we're changing. And as far as the, the driver's license, uh, if you have a moving violation and, and people are under the influence of marijuana, uh, they will be arrested, is that correct? Yes, we process alike in OWI 
or as an OWI. Okay, so that, that kind of covers that as well then. And, and I wanted to ask you also about, uh, you know, some of these that I got the list here about uh, personal residents. Are these uh, personal residents that people have been arrested for, is it because of somebody called in a violation and where they had a, a 911 call saying that there's a disturbance going on? Is that how most of these uh, are, in other words, how these arrests are being uh, addressed? Is it because somebody called from the residence that there's a disturbance or? You don't just drop into somebody's home and say, I'm checking you for this or that. Correct. Correct. Most of the times that we're at the person's residence is for something else. And then the marijuana has been noticed, so they get cited for that. Um, yes, we do get calls where neighbors like, I can smell it coming from my neighbor's house. So we'll go obviously investigate those. But I would probably say two thirds easily is because we're there for some other type of disturbance and then the marijuana was noticed as we were in, in the house. Okay. So basically these are violations that are coming to the 911 as a disturbance and then you, then you investigate <coughs> the disturbance and then you find one other violation as well as what the first one was addressed. Correct. So it'll be a multiple, multiple citations then. Correct. Okay. Thank you. That answers my question. So. Comments? Okay. All right. Uh, well, I just before I go into my minutes, just when I uh, address it, just a couple of things. I don't think the fine is a deterrent at all, as you you stated. All uh, at least, uh, most people don't even know what the fine is. So I don't think it works to use it as a deterrent. I think it's just a matter of making it more fair. Uh, so that's why I'm in favor of reducing it. Um, I would like to ask staff: uh, household versus public. There's no way of putting that into an ordinance, is there? Can we differentiate um, between? I think we could look into that, um, particularly because there are a few municipalities that do distinguish between private and public. Um, Madison does um, allow a person to possess up to 28 grams in a private place. Um, however, if they possess marijuana in a public place, they faint, the, the fine can be up to a hundred. <coughs> um, same thing for, oh no, Milwaukee is all public, so I think the only one that distinguishes between private and public, at least from what I'm seeing, Madison, is just Madison. Monona distinguishes, but Monona basically says, um, 21 and older are permitted or their lawful guests can use marijuana at their residence and 21 and older can possess at any location regardless of public or private. So that is something we could look into with that, that would be up to the committee's discretion to change that. Okay. Well, um, I'd like to make some changes right off the bat here. Uh, as I understand it, 28 grams is what the state... The suggestion from state statutes was 25 for municipalities Have to regulate 25 and under. However, there is no legal reason why we can't raise the amount um, to 27 or 28. I think it's like 28.88 something is one ounce. So, okay, I would I would like to make a vote when we do one motion. I'd like to... Uh, amend uh, the ordinance to up it from 25 grams to 28 grams. Second by Alder Stevens. Uh, any discussion on that? Should we vote on the board? We vote on the board. Better vote on the board. Well, for each amendment, yes, we should vote on the board. Mm -hmm. yeah. Up yet. Huh? Okay. <coughs> How would you like to vote? Be a nay. Okay. So that vote passes um, three to one with Alder uh, Vanderlees voting no. Okay. Then the next amendment I would like to include would be um, 
adding community service as a possibility to uh, the consequences that it can be a fine and or community service in lieu of a fine uh, in lieu of a fine or in conjunction with a fine Motion. Yep. I'll second. Seconded by Alder Stoyer. Any discussion on that? Okay, let's is go it, to the board. Fine or just community service? Or both. Or it could both. be, they could. In conjunction, um, in lieu of a fine or in conjunction with a fine. <coughs> so it gives them more options. They can. We'll vote. Okay. And that was a motion by Alder Scandal, second by Stewart. Alder Stevens, that one. Stevens. Okay. <coughs> well, the vote should have started. Yeah, nothing popped up. No oh, here it is. There it is. Mine's not popping up yet. At no. all. Okay. Sorry. Well, it's not your fault. A delay. But you're grounded. Two weeks. <laughs> Alder Vandalese, how would you like to vote? That'd be a nay. Nay. Thank you. All right, so that motion passes. Uh, three to one was Alder Vandalese voting no. Okay, then the only other item for me then is the household versus public, and I'm wondering if we need to hold this then for two weeks for staff to work on this and get back to us. I mean, um, I don't know if we can do something with that tonight. Mm -hmm. um, I guess we would just need specifics as to if you want to split the fine. I'm not sure how um, you wanted to distinguish between if you wanted a different set of penalties or fines for private versus possession public. in private versus possession in public. Public. Mm -hmm. I, I would think so, yeah. Okay. So we would just need those specifics unless you wanted us to come up with suggestions or not that. I would think suggestions and also suggestions on uh, a fine amount. For Household. private versus yep. private versus public. Public. Okay. I do have one comment on that. We yep. Do, when you say private it should be privately owned residents. Okay. So not a renter? Right. <laughs> no. well, and the reason being there's too many people in that Privately owned <laughs> residents. Okay, we can start there. We can start there. So with the amendment, staff can make those changes and then bring proposed changes for um, the distinction between private residents and public space. Okay. Um, and then bring that back to the committee. Okay. And then the only thing I forgot to address that I wanted to was paraphernalia. Uh, that's a sticky wick uh, because paraf most paraphernalia used for marijuana could also be used for other drugs. So how to d to, to say to exu uh, to exhibit to e to not to take uh, a pipe. Remove pipe to from distinguish? the distinguish? Dis yes, distinguish. That'll do it. We Thank you. would need a motion to um, on the referral to staff. So I don't think we had a motion in the vote for that. Well I was Okay, you're going to do okay. Yep, yep. Okay. Uh, I just wanted to make this last comment before mm -hmm. I forgot. So uh, to distinguish between a pipe used for marijuana and a pipe used for crack is really well uh, we wanna make a comment? Uh, uh -huh. we can open the floor. <coughs> <coughs> Motion open the floor. Motion open the floor by Alder Stoyer. Second by Alder Vanderlees. Okay. Uh, uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Floor is now open. Yep. Yeah, I, I would simply uh, suggest that uh, although it may be very difficult to tell the difference between a pipe that's been used to smoke a THC bearing product versus a legal non THC bearing product, um, it's very easy to tell the difference between a pipe that's been used to smoke marijuana versus crack versus meth versus other substances. Uh, I think it stands out rather clearly. Well, perhaps that is something staff can come, we can add that to them, to the, uh, any, other, any questions for that? We could, um, we could look into that. 
there's ways we can make distinguishing. I think it would be very difficult, but we can look into it. And, and, and then I'll have a report back and we can figure out. We'll know. So between uh, marijuana pipes and other types of pipes? Yeah. Because I know, I mean, like, even if you talk like a scale, how do you know what it's what's being weighed? Or I mean, it. it but we, well, we can, we, we're going to send it. <coughs> the very fact that the ambiguity exists just to me that it would be very difficult to prosecute in the case. Well, if they're paraphernalia as a whole, well, let's get back to it. Right. Let's get more info and get back to it. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. That's good. Anything else? No. Anything else? No. Thank you. Motion closed. Motion closed before by Alder Stevens. Second. Second by Alder Stoyer. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Floor is now closed. Uh, motion to. I'm so sorry, that we have motion roll. to close by Alder Stevens, seconded by Stoyer. Yep. Okay. And you have both paraphernalia and private versus. To um, write for staff to look into um, changing the fine um, fines for privately uh, for possession in privately owned residence versus public spaces, and to distinguish between um, marijuana pipes and other types of pipes. Yeah. Yeah. If so we get if we can reach out to the police and, uh, and uh, uh, our municipal courts to get their input on this too, that would be super. Is that one motion? It's to refer to staff refer with that. Staff yep. with right. that. Okay. Can you make the motion? I'll make that motion. Okay, that motion is made by Alder Stoyer. Seconded by Alder Vanderleest. Not Alder Stevens. Oh, Alder Stevens. Stevens. Sorry. <laughs> Alder Stevens. <laughs> ah, okay. Thank Sto you. Stoyer, Stevens. Yep. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Uh, it goes back to staff. Three to one. Wait, oh, did should that, we do it? Did we? I heard a nay. Yeah. It was me. Okay, so do you, should we do it on the board? Yes. Okay. My board is not working here. Yep, yep. Right, I will she'll, mark, she'll mark you, you as an A. Mark you as an A. <coughs> that passed on um, on a vote of three to one with Alder Vanderlee's voting no. Okay. So I think we're getting close. <laughs> Uh, that does our regular business informational liquor violation report from the police department for October 8th, 2018. Uh, from September 24th to October 8th, there were no liquor violations, ordinance violations. We did issue one warning uh, to 219 North Washington Street, um, the owner of the building for maintaining a public nuisance first offense. Okay. That's all we have on the liquor violations. Yeah, that's yeah, 219 North Washington Street. I think I know. Okay. Uh, anything on that, gentlemen? Questions or anything for the? No, receiving is pretty good. Oh, motion, motion to receive, receive and place on file. Receive and place on file by Alder Stoyer. Same. Seconded by Alder Vanderleest this time. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Ooh, that passes unanimously. Motion to adjourn. Well, there's <coughs> No, there's nothing on there. No. It just. Yep. This one's cheese. Mm -hmm. Now I am. Yep. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn by Alder Stoyer. Seconded by Alder Vandalist. All in favor, hold your breath. Aye. <laughs> Aye. Uh, opposed? We are adjourned. <coughs> yep. Thank you, everyone. I think we did good work today. I have a whole new Respect for the English language, you have to listen to me. Yeah. Now I'm trying to remember how to...